just about every almond you put in your mouth comes from here, California's Central Valley. And these almonds need just about every honeybee in America to grow. But that's where things get sticky. The almond world is facing some tough questions. Are almonds killing our bees? Are almonds turning California into a water-starved wasteland? Are almonds just another out-of-control monocrop fed by millennial hipsters and their obsession with almond milk lattes? Lovely people, it's true. Our demand for almonds has exploded. We now eat four times as many almonds as we did in the late 90s. And what's not to love? Mm. Almonds are packed with protein and vitamins and contain more calcium and fiber than any other nut. But has this demand reached a tipping point? Are growers laying waste to the natural world just to satisfy our need for nuts? The answer might surprise you. So let's start at the start. Let's start with the honeybees. And the water. Wait, you're not till part two. But they want to know, are almonds sucking California dry? Right, and your episode drops a week after this one goes live. I have to wait a week? Well, that depends on when you're seeing this. If part two is live, you'll be able to click on that video at the end of this one, or just check the description below. Anyway, as I was saying, honeybees. That's the sound of the world's biggest pollination event. The Central Valley produces nearly every almond grown in America, and 80% of the world's almonds. Every February, 40 billion bees, that's nine out of 10 bees in America, are trucked in from all over the country to pollinate the largest almond bloom on the planet. Put simply, there just aren't enough honeybees in California to pollinate them. The practice is nothing new. The ancient Egyptians moved hives along the Nile on barges to achieve the same ends. Because way back then, they also knew no bees means no almonds. But it's not just almonds that are at stake here. Bees are responsible for one in every three bites we take. That's one third of all the food we eat. A quick word about this double episode deep dive we're doing here. Go on. Uh, oh. Both these episodes are sponsored by Blue Diamond Growers, so thank you, Blue Diamond, for making these stories possible and for letting us make them independently. Blue Diamond got zero editorial input into this story. They see it for the first time when it goes live, just like you. Okay, Almond Pollination 101. Here's how it works. Almonds grow on trees. Each flower is a potential almond, but only if it's pollinated. Most varieties need to be cross-pollinated, which means pollen from one kind of almond has to get to the flower of another kind. Because yes, there are different varieties of almonds. Now, technically, any pollinator could do the job, but honeybees are the best in the business. Honeybees love feasting on the almond nectar, and they carry the nutrient-rich pollen back to the hive to feed their babies. Along the way, something happens. This pollen rubs off their furry little bodies and onto the next flower they're visiting. Two to three weeks after pollination, these flowers will set fruit, teeny tiny baby almonds called nutlets. It's sort of an accidental symbiotic miracle. The almonds need the bees and the bees need the almonds. So it's in the farmer's interest to keep the bees healthy. My family's been using the same beekeepers for the last uh, 20 years more so than just doing a business transaction with a beekeeper, it's more of a partnership. We both need each other. This is Lucas Van Dyne, a fourth generation almond grower. Lucas rents two hives per acre. One hive can do the job, but two optimize his chances for every flower to be pollinated. I heard that like back in the 70s, you could get a hive for maybe $12. And what's it like today? <clears throat> 10 times that, or more. After almonds, beekeepers take their bees to pollinate melons, berries, grapes, squash, apples, pears, and more. But because almonds are the first crop to rouse these bees from their winter lull, it's important to ask, 
Are almonds helping or harming these bees when they're at their most weakened state? First, we need to recognize one clear fact. Beekeepers suffer bee losses all year long. Winter deaths alone have climbed to 40%, yet the number of bee colonies in America is not actually in decline. Because beekeepers are constantly working to propagate new colonies and restore their losses. Almonds are their early season boost. They provide so much nutrition for honeybees, so much fuel for population growth, that beekeepers start splitting hives after pollination. Yeah, they create two hives from where there was one, because there are so many new bees. Now to be sure, other risks continue to threaten America's honeybees, and they have nothing to do with almond farming, like the varroa mite, which for now is an unstoppable parasite decimating our honeybees. And what about chemical sprays? I'm glad you asked. A watershed moment came in 2014 when the almond community went into survival mode. Growers and beekeepers and scientists came together to agree on a set of best practices that would ensure better bee health. So now, farmers wait to spray, say, a fungicide to stop blossom rot until after the bees have returned to their hives at the end of the workday. And they use non-residual sprays so that by the time the bees go back out to forage the next morning, morning, that spray is already dried up. None of this is mandatory. So why are 90% of California's almond growers following these best practices? Because they now have more data to guide them, data that helps them protect both their harvest and the honeybees. Because remember, no bees, no almonds. And that's the quiet revolution that doesn't make the headlines. In fact, Blue Diamond Growers, America's largest almond cooperative, actually incentivizes farmers with cash to go the extra mile for the honeybees. See this? This is a water station. Because just like us, bees need to drink. They'll fly up to five miles just to find a water source. So Blue Diamond Growers bring the water to them. The burlap cover allows the bees a safe place to land while they drink. Let me show you something else. This is mustard. It's a cover crop planted inside the almond orchard, right among the trees. And it's kind of a big deal. Just a decade ago, you'd never have seen cover crops here. They give the bees additional food to forage before and after the almond bloom. Bees, like humans, do best on a diverse diet. These cover crops also revitalize native pollinators, who, remember, can propagate the almonds too. It's just that they're such a small population compared to the hired honeybees. So to find out if these trees survive the frost and bugs and drought and still produce a bumper crop, you'll have to watch part two right here when it goes live.